Hello. Yeah. I got a feeling that all of you watching right now are looking at the screen, looking at me, and like Marty McFly at the end of Back to the Future, you're saying, what was all that about no more Blu-ray updates in 2021? And all I can honestly say in response is, well, I figured, what the hell. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Blu-ray update on Razorwire Reviews in 2021. The year I said I was going to stop buying Blu-rays. <laughs> um, with the exception of the Eureka stuff and the, the new Jackie Chan things. What can I say? What can I honestly say? It's the it's the ten year anniversary and of the channel. The this this month, April twenty twenty one, and Blu ray updates and buying Blu rays, collecting Blu rays has been a big part of my my channel and uh, my journey through this through this channel. So, I thought that um I would show you some of the things I've bought over the past three months, four months now. I think it's almost four months, right? Because I kind of did the conquering my collection for January of 2021 and showed you, I think, a couple of things that I bought and then watched straight away. And I was doing really good with that. And I was feeling very proud of myself. Like, I'm, I'm buying things and watching them straight away. And then, you know, um, a couple of sales and, uh, you know, nice little bonus. And you think, well, again, what the hell? So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to really try. It's a sickness, people. It's an absolute sickness. It's an addiction. It is legit addiction, but I feel like I've struck a very healthy balance with the things that I've picked up over the past three months, and um, yeah, and so I, I could have just waited until I watched some of these and do the Conquer My Collection videos, but I thought, let's do a good old-fashioned Blu-ray update. I, I do enjoy doing them, you know, and I, I don't feel particularly bad about anything that I've bought, so let's just throw up a couple of videos. I'm going to segment this into, I think, five different videos, just, just so that I can take my time a little bit and, and just that there seem to be different groupings of things I can put together. And so instead of rushing through a bunch of titles, I thought I'd just take my time and show you piece by piece. Now, I recently did a video about my uh, Disney Blu-ray collection, which had a lot of good response to it, I think, some good comments and things. And I have decided to ultimately continue collecting them. And the prices have just been, they've been dropping really low. I remember when I first started collecting Blu-rays in general in like 2011, Disney Blu-rays were kind of like premiums. Like you really wouldn't see them drop below like 15 pounds. And, um, you know, it was, it was kind of, you'd have to wait for a certain deal to really get any sort of good price on them. You know, a single title price was always going to be really expensive. So it was always like bits and pieces here. And uh, it also depended on whether it was a generic title that didn't have any like, you know, special fancy treatment, like the, the Lion King Diamond Edition was always really expensive and things like that. So it was just one of those things where it wasn't easy to collect them um, that much in terms of quantity. But now it just seems like a lot of them are really dropping, and so I'm taking advantage of, of the lowest prices I can find. In fact, one, two, three, four of these are actually from um, Poundland, which I was very happy to see. Um, I went to Poundland, I hadn't been to the city in almost a year, I think. And I, I, I still, I went in and thought, well, there's, there's a reason I didn't come here in, in almost a year, I think. It's just, yeah, people are crazy out there still. Regardless, that's a whole other topic. But I went to Poundland to see what they had, and they had quite a few things. So I'll show you the other stuff I got from Poundland in a separate video, but there's going to be five, five parts to this. So the first one here is my Disney Blu-ray update. Then we'll be going to Arrow Video and BFI in another part. Then the Poundland stuff that I picked up. Number four, well, I don't know what order they'll be in, but the, the other one, the fourth, will be Criterion. I got quite a few Criterion things in the sale. And then finally, Eureka and 88 Films slash the Jackie Chan stuff. So let's just get into the Disney things. Now I have two 4K Disney titles, which is, and there's, a, there's, a quite, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven titles here. So it's it's a pretty pretty decent amount for Disney. And it's really beefed up my Disney collection. And it's a nice mix of things that I've seen and love and things that I haven't seen. So I'm quite excited about that. Now, the first one, um, or the first two, are 4K releases. We'll just go with the first one here. So this I didn't own already in, in regular Blu-ray. And the only reason I got it was, well, there's two reasons. One was the price for a 4K release. It was like $11.99, which is really good, I thought. 
um, and also the film is presented for the first time in its original aspect ratio on the 4K release. So apparently the Blu-ray it doesn't look exactly like it did in the cinema in a theatrical presentation, which is fine. You know, uh, well, it's not fine. I think that the the difference is almost imperceptible, but it's it's presented in its legit original aspect ratio, which I really that's something that I. I'm interested in and I support and I want to see as much as possible. So I thought, well, that's kind of, that really pulls me towards it. I think it is a 2K upscale, even though it was, you know, released in the 90s. So it was done on film. I don't know why they can't get legit 4K transfers of, you know, movies that were done on film. But uh, regardless, um, again, I wanted to see what one of the old Disney films would look like in 4K for one thing. But also, it's not going to look any worse than Blu-ray, and it has the original aspect ratio, and the film itself is Aladdin, with a super nice slipcover. Really nice, like, that's kind of like the classic poster, I think. So I really love the look of this. Haven't watched it yet, but um, this is one that I grew up on, but probably haven't seen in, I would say, at least 25 years, I'd say, something like that. So <laughs> a quarter of a century since I've seen this, probably. But I remember really loving it and, of course, loving the video game. I think a lot of people grew up on that video game, which was so much fun. But, uh, yeah, Aladdin. So I'm intrigued to check this out to see the original aspect ratio, but just to see the film itself again, I think. Now, the next one is another one that's unfortunately an upscale, but it is a more recent Disney film. But I needed to buy this. I already have it. I'll show you the, um, the other version I have right here. It is the Steelbook version of Moana. I'll take the... Uh, the clear slipcase off actually so you can actually see it without the glass. It's a very nice steelbook of Moana, which is probably my favorite Disney film ever, I think. So I absolutely love this film and uh, this is a really nice steelbook. But unfortunately, this is a European release. And so on the, the J card, it says Viana, which is fine, you know, it's like a different title on the thing, but it's a steelbook, so you take off the card and, you know, you got a nice steelbook of the movie. But um, when you watch the film, they say in the movie, Viana, not Moana. And I honestly can't get behind that. I mean, I can watch it as an oddity, but I mean, there's, there's literally no other track on the disc that plays the original Moana version. So it's like, Viana, make wit. Like, it's like, huh? And I, I had to skip to the end and see that that kind of pivotal song where she's like, I am Viana. It's like, no, it doesn't doesn't quite sit on the <laughs> in the brain quite nicely. I don't know, it's just a weird thing. So I thought, well, at some point I'm going to have to buy the, the UK Blu-ray and put it in the steelbook. Then the 4K release was announced, and so I bought this on release. Um, just to see and you know, there's there's only going to be a marginal uptick in quality of this because it's Was finished in 2k, but at least it's a, it's a slightly higher resolution than 1080p that they're working from and they upscale and then there's the HDR and stuff So I'm intrigued to check this out But either way I needed the film just as it was with the Moana, you know kind of um, version And we did actually pop in the blu-ray from this and watched um, almost all of the extras. There's a really good one uh, what's it called? Uh, Voices of the Island, I think. Or Voice Voice of the Islands, I think? Yeah. Seems like Voices of the Islands would be a better way of phrasing it, but um, it's a feature about the research they did on the Polynesian islands and things like that, and it's a really interesting look into the culture and how much they really wanted to bring a lot of authenticity to the design, the feel, and the sound of the movie and the characters and that culture. And I remember when the film came out, it got a lot of criticism for getting a lot of things wrong. So, <laughs> oh well. But uh, yeah, I absolutely love this film. And it's, it's, I remember when this came out, I was like, eh, didn't even bother going to see it. It's like, oh, The Rock's in it, you know. And I used to love The Rock, but it's like, you roll your eyes a little bit. And then we watched it, and it was like, that was really good. And it just kind of stuck with you, you know. It just kept sticking in my brain, and then we would put it on almost every night when we went to sleep, and we loved it. And it's just one of our favorite films now, I think. So, nice to get the 4K. I'm looking forward to getting the chance to sit down and just watch it and see how it looks and stuff. Now, we move on to just the regular... We've got the Poundland stuff. Um, let's just kind of burn through that. I've only seen this once when it came out in the cinema. Oh, and I think this is a a previously... Yeah, this is a, a replay version, a refurbished second-hand disc. And this one, it doesn't say on the spine, because of course it doesn't. And it's just one of those things where... 
you get the Disney Blu-ray, sometimes they have the number on the spine, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the, the number matches, sometimes it doesn't. This one has nothing. I think it's like 48 or 49 in the Classics series, and the film is Bolt, with John Travolta playing this dog. I saw it in the cinema in 3D, I think, and I really liked it, but it wasn't great. You know, so it's, it's just one to have for the collection. I will watch it again. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have bought it, you know. And there is an element of me that would like to just have all the Disney films, even if I'm not going to watch all of them, which seems crazy, but I am a collector. As much as I love watching the films, I like owning certain sections of film history. And for me, the Disney classics, the Disney animated films, they are, that they have a certain amount of weight to them in terms of that. And I just want to check something, because it looks like the, the case is dirty. So just give me a second. Okay, I, I inspected the case, and... Um... <laughs> I think I just scraped someone's booger off the <laughs> off the inlay. It was a little bit of green gunk, and I just scraped it off. So I'll I'll, I'll make sure not to put my fingers in my mouth um, before I get to a, a, the bathroom to wash my hands. But there you go. And I will be changing, swapping all of these out for the the clear cases, like I showed you in the previous video. Um, I quite I just quite like doing it like that. And uh, if I regret it, I regret it. But there's Bolt there. Um, and do let me know your thoughts on any of these films as I, as I go through them. This is another one that is also pre-owned. The other two from Poundland are brand new. So this one is classic number 51. And I really, really like this one. I, I think I've only seen it twice. I think I took my brother to see this in the cinema, so he would have been like seven years old at the time. But this is a really fun concept, a really fun film, and it's Wreck-It Ralph. And for a while, I was trying to get the steelbook of this because it, uh, it looked fantastic, but it was just a bit too pricey, and uh, I didn't love the film that much. But um, Wreck It Ralph, fun concept, you know this this little character who's part of a video game, and you go inside the inner workings of what a video game character does when the machine's not on, and goes about their regular day, and then he gets lost in other video games. It's a super fun concept, super fun film. Really enjoy it, and for two pound, I think it's uh, an easy no brainer to add to the collection. Now these two are not part of the animated classics line as such. Um, but they're definitely films that I, I think I've seen bits of. I'm not sure if I've really seen them in full, and certainly haven't seen them in at least 25 years again, I would say. So the first one is The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, and the second one is, of course, The Lion King 3, or uh, Lion King 1 and a half. So this is, I believe, the one where Timon and Pumbaa, they kind of go through the events of the first film, and it's like a super meta movie, and uh, from what I remember, it's kind of brilliant. So this uh, has some classic DVD bonus features on it, I'm not sure about it. There's a making of Lion King 3, and the same with this one has the classic DVD bonus features. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to checking these out. I remember when The Lion King first came out on Blu-ray, there was like the trilogy box sets, but I never really went for those. But um, yeah, I'm intrigued to check these out, especially considering the fact they're doing the live-action remake of Lion King 2, and uh, they might not be following the animated version as such, and maybe just, you know, kind of moving forward from the, the 2019 version by Jon Favreau. Now, the next five all have the classic, well, not classic, they have, I don't, well, yeah, they're kind of the classics slip covers. I won't call them classic slip covers, but uh, I'm kind of mixed on these because the designs are kind of cool. I like how the colors line up and everything. You know, it looks very nice and shiny on the shelf, but to get all of them is, it would be such a pain. And again, I've, I've talked about this before and I, I've kind of ripped up one of these uh, on camera before, but yeah, I don't know. And I, I would say if anyone wants the slip covers, I'd be happy to send them to them, but there are chips around the edges and stuff. It's, they're not in you know perfect condition. So, you know, what does it really matter? So I'm just gonna show you these and and uh, it is what it is. So the first one is Ralph Breaks the Internet. 5 dollars was a pretty good price for that, I think. Uh, I, I, I didn't like this one as much as the first one. Uh, a lot of the bringing all the IPs together is a lot of fun, very Ready Player One-ish in that sense, and it's fun to see all these different characters, the Disney princesses, and a lot of really funny jokes re relating to the internet on this, but the story itself was a, eh, left a little to be desired for me, I think, personally. And uh, I'm intrigued to see if uh, all of these have the same designs on the inside. Ah, it doesn't. Cool. I like that. I'm glad. You know, again, they're okay, the character posters and stuff, but I like it when it's like a nice proper poster. So that's that's cool. Yeah. So this has... Yeah, see, the extras on these, I think the more recent ones don't have too much on them, but again, I haven't checked them out. This is classic number 56. So it was an instant classic upon release. So there we go. Ralph breaks the internet. Um, and I will be taking these and 
throwing them on the floor. This one, I, I, I want to do a bit more research, but I've not been able to find out much about the, the specifics of what I'm interested in on this, which is, uh, this is a double pack of movies. This is The Rescuers and The Rescuers Down Under. Great price for both of these films. Um, I recently watched rewatched both of these. No, actually, I had never seen the original. So I watched the original and then rewatched the Down Under, which is one of my favorites from when I was a kid, uh, in this year's 24 hour movie marathon, movie marathon 10, which you'll probably see in 2027 whenever I get around to editing it. Now, there, there used to be a standalone release of The Rescuers. There was a standalone release of The Rescuers Down Under in the UK, but it was only on the Steelbook and from Zavi, and it's gone out of print. So I've looked on the back. It does have the extras for um, The Rescuers Down Under, but I don't know if it has the extras for the first Rescuers movie. And I like having the extras. So I may have to go back and get the first one, but I'm glad it at least has the, the making of The Rescuers Down Under and a few other bits and pieces. But I love these films. The first one is, is so much fun. And the second one, that opening sequence with the eagle and the, and the young boys, Cody, that sequence with the eagle is breathtaking. I mean, the opening titles are incredible and they still kind of get my, my adrenaline going. I love the opening. It's such an amazing shot starting on this little like bug in kind of the jungle and then panning forward across the outback. It's just an incredible like one shot, you know, and it's, yeah, it kind of dates a little bit with the early CGI that they use, but the, the sequence of the eagle is, my God, it's, it's such a beautiful scene. I put that scene up against many of the classic Disney scenes from over the years, and I would assume that the inside of this one looks uh, identical because they are doing the double pack. Uh, yeah, that's fine. But I actually quite like the look of that with the two different colors. They seem to match very nicely. The kind of blue and yellow is what my partially colorblind brain would tell me. But uh, it's a nice contrast. I like that. Of course, where do you put it in the chron chronology, I suppose, with 23 and 29? I, I would have honestly just preferred to have two separate standalone releases, but I get it. I get it. And the slipcover goes down on the floor. I definitely grew up on this one, but it's one of the ones I have the more vague memories of, like Fox and the Hound and some other ones. But there's certain bits that, you know, I feel like it's going to bring back so many memories when I finally sit down and watch it, and it is Robin Hood. This is a really nice slip cover. I like the, the, the kind of sheen. See, it's tricky because I don't, I'm not going to put them, and it has all the, the wear and tear on the bottom there, so all the, the kind of metallic stuff underneath is chipped away, so it's not in great condition either, so I don't really feel too bad about junking it, but... It's a really nice slip cover, that one. I really like that. That's probably one of my favorite ones that I've seen. Uh, put that on the floor. Ah, nice. We have a cool cover for the actual thing. But yeah, I, I, I have very little memory of kind of the story or, or even, yeah, but just seeing the images on the back, it kind of, there's little bits of memory there. So I'm really looking forward to going back to this one and, uh, and checking it out. The next one, I really can't tell you if I've seen before. I feel like I have, uh, but I mm, maybe not. It might, might have been one of the ones that maybe my grandparents taped off the TV, but I never had on. Maybe I did, though. I don't know. I feel like I did have this on VHS, because I had a lot of them on VHS when I was a kid. I kind of assume that people watching have seen all my videos, which is awful. But you know, I, I kind of, I, I always feel wary of repeating myself, if that makes sense. But um, I had a big, when I was a kid, VHS, owning videos was a big thing for me. I loved it. And Disney was like one of the big things I had a lot of. And so I had the nice Disney collection. But this is The Sword in the Stone. I feel like I did see this. And I think I, I did actually own it, but I didn't watch it very much. So again, memories in this are very, very, even vaguer than Robin Hood, actually. And on the inside we have, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's actually a bit, I prefer that one a little bit more to the slipcover. I think that's a nice cover. So The Sword in the Stone, that's classic number 18. I know this is, was this the one where it was like a really, a rough patch for Disney? I know with Robin Hood, there was like recycled animation and stuff, or, or re recycled rotoscoped um, source material and things, but yeah. So, yeah, so there's like, you know, one, two, three, four, there's four ones that I haven't seen, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that I have. So it's a nice... A nice mix, nice balance, you know. And finally, we have two I've never seen uh, and wasn't even aware of when I was a kid. And it is another double pack. It is Fun and Fancy Free and The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. So very nicely put together by Disney. This is um, Disney Classic number nine and Disney Classic number 11. <laughs> um, I don't know why they don't just pull their finger out and get the, get these, like, the kind of... The ones, I forget which film it is in between, what would it be? 
like ba between Bambi and like Cinderella, I think. There's like the that kind of run of like was it Melody Time? There's like a few like there's a few kind of just shorter ones that they made, and um, I don't know. I think they've been released. I think they're all up there. I think they're all on Disney Plus and HD, but Blu-ray is a little bit different. And again, I would assume the uh, yeah the main cover on the inside is exactly the same. But um, this is exciting just because I've never seen them before, and one of them is a Mickey Mouse film. But I have heard these aren't great, so I'm not expecting too much. And this was four ninety nine, so you know two pound fifty per movie is pretty good, I think. So there we go. That was the the Disney Blu-ray update, um, and I said this was the first of five parts to this Blu-ray update for 2021. It is actually um, the first part of six. So the sixth one will be a 4K dedicated update video. So look forward to all of them. If you like these kind of videos, if you're watching at this point, I'm assuming that you do. And let me know any of your thoughts on the Disney films, any any thoughts on Disney collecting and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how many how many more I would need to complete the collection per se. Quite a few more. I mean, there's a lot of films, you know. And I I, I can't remember the last count that I did. I mean, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, and now twenty five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. So I have more than half, which is pretty good. But um, I'm, I'm in no rush either. It was just like a lot of really good prices. And I jumped on them. And the Poundland titles kind of spurred me on to kind of grab a few more. Anyway. And, and that's the, the thing is as well, they're all on Disney+. Plus. I could just watch them all on Disney+. Plus, But I like owning them. As far as I'm aware, they all have extras in some way, shape, or form. And they never really put those extras on Disney+. Plus. They might in the future, but also, you know, it's streaming. So yeah, there's extras on this, on that, uh, even on the Lion King 2 and 3 have extras, and you're not going to see those on Disney+. Plus. But uh, yeah, all special features included, so that's kind of a big part of it as well. But just having the physical collection, because you never know. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, it's alright by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans and calling into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...